Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Anna and today we've been talking about my November Oni bots. Let's get going. So it feels like this November, like I've been reading kind of less Oni books. I didn't read quite a lot as how I did before. So I don't know, I'm just find, struggling to find good audio books for me to listen to. So it's been up and down, but at least I got some better than none, right? So let's get going. So my first book is These Feathered Flames by Alexandra Arvey. When twin hairs are born in children, their fates are decided at a young age. While Isabetta remained a court to learn the skills, she would need as a future queen. Asa was taken away to train with her aunt, the mysterious firebird, who ensured magic remained balanced in the realm. So I kind of found this book a bit boring and gave it a three stars. It was a little bit of slow pace and like the way to talk about politics was a little bit too repetitive. I didn't really like that. Um, it just has too much and just that just made me bored. Like, I like books when they have politics, but not to the point that it overtakes everything else. So, that kind of made me be a little bit bored. And the romance between the sister, I did like that. I did like the relationship between the two. And I wish we had more of the relationship, just because it's, it was actually done pretty well. I like how the author had done it. The world building wasn't really that great, we were just in the palace for the majority of time, so I wish we had gotten more world building. And this sounds kind of cool, but like the majority of the book was in the palace, and I wish we had gotten more out of it. And but um, yeah, it was. this is actually a Russian folk called Retail of the Firebird, which I did not know until I read it. But I actually don't know too much about the Firebird, so this is kind of nice. Uh, but it was really interesting to read. So yeah, I kind of like is is a Veta, like she is untrusting, manipulative personality, and it honestly makes her like a compelling character. So I I don't really like Asa. She's more naive and childish, and she makes kind of stupid choices. But like. No, you're not supposed to do that, why'd you do that? So, I had one of those moments with her, so... I like as a little way more than Asa. Um, but, um... But, she asks, one good thing about Asa is that she stays focused. Especially, like, on the throw and the political game. So... Um, she is more logical on that perspective. She knows what she wants and she goes for it. So I do like that part. Um, it was really interesting, as I said, with the whole Russian inspired. I think it still could have been explored more. And honestly, I did not really like the aunt. I, I think the aunt was a little bit pushy. And I don't know, she, she, she seems kind of fishy to me, so... I don't know, it's kind of more pushed for like, oh, you have to do this, because this and this and this, so... I don't know, I feel like the aunt was a little bit pushy. So yeah, so this book was really uh, character driven, so it, this book probably won't be for you if you don't like character driven. It actually took me a while to get into the plot because it was so character driven. I like plots more than characters, so I am a plot driven person. So it was kind of up and down for me for this book. I also felt like some places were dragged and Again, as I said before with the politics, it was repetitive. So I just didn't think the book needed that much politics. Um, and honestly, it honestly felt like the whole book was just relying on that only. So, yeah. But, um, yeah, so also with the plot twist, they were also kind of dragging on as well. So I didn't really like that either. So, um, I still gave it three stars, but I don't know, I think it could still be a a lot more, uh, a lot better, but um, yeah. So my next one is, I love this one so much, but there was one thing that kind of drove me away for a little bit, but um, this is the hand of artist by Alka and Josie. So I, I don't know if you guys remember, but one of my challenges when I went to hunt for books on the one minute, do you remember the perfumist book, the one with the purple and pink shades? Well, guess what? I found out that's the third book of this series. So, ta-da! 
why I don't do research, I don't know. But um, yeah, so that was a part of this trilogy that I'm currently reading right now. So, escaping from the muse of marriage, Seventy Yun Lakshima makes her way alone to the vibrant 1950s pink city of Jaipur. There she becomes the most highly requested hand artist and confident to the wealthy women of the upper class, but trust them with the secrets of the wealthy. She can never reveal her own. I gave this a four stars. I love it. I love the characters. I love the settings. The one thing that kind of turned me away was how, like, the author kind of, like, I want to say glorified, but, like, it heavily pushed on, like, the poverty and all that stuff. So that kind of loved me in the wrong way. So I really like this book. It was kind of heartwarming at times about this nice, nice functional marriage and dreams and sisterhood, friendship, customs transitions and self-discovery that was all in this book itself, so I really like that part. And I also find Akshima to be a strong character. She knows what she wants and she goes for it. That proved when she bought a house by herself, and especially during these kind of times when it's so frowned upon that women can be their own boss, that's actually really admirable for Akshima to be able to buy her own house, of course. There were some struggles going along the journey, and she ends up doing something else. But honestly, that was still admirable, to be honest. So, yeah. But uh, yeah, she's strong, she's smart. I kinda didn't really like her sister about her. She kinda frustrated me. So, you know, like, yeah, she's a teenager and she will make stupid choices. I mean, I was a teenager once and I made stupid choices. But, like, Radha was just on a whole nother level of stupidity, so I didn't like all the choices that she made. And yeah, I also really like the herbal medicine in the book, I like how they combine them with traditional medicine in the story, and honestly I found the story so vivid and lush, and it does capture your attention, and why you're following uh, Lakshima, who is doing henna for high society women in the 1950s, so I really like the colors and the designs that I described in the book. I really like how the author described them. It was really beautiful. And I like how she did with the meanings. Like she would put henna on the drawing, on the head, and she would make like little meanings behind them. So I thought that was really cool. I'll post the picture of henna if you guys don't know what a henna is. But they're like really meaningful. Mostly used for weddings that what they would draw on their hand. But it's mostly on their hand as well. But it's just mostly used for weddings. So yeah, I like the small details. And honestly I thought the way how the author handled with all the gossipers that can break down your reputation and ruin your careers. I thought that was also well done as well. And like all the trust that Lakshima had built so far only for it to come down. I thought that was also done well done. So yeah, so I am actually reading book two, which is the secrets of Jay Pood. I have finished that one and so I will give you my thoughts at, at the end of December, so hang on tight. So my last one, yeah, I only read three book three audiobooks in November. As I said it was up and down, so that was kinda of weird. For me, because usually I would read more than three audio books, but it was a slow month, so. So my last one is The, the Last of Vanish by Megan Miranda. Ten years ago, Abigail Lovett fell into a job she loves. Managing a passage in a cozy upscale resort nestled in the North Carolina mountain town of Cunnels Pass. Cunnels Pass is best known for its outdoor offerings, rafting and hiking with access to the Appalachian Trail by way of a gorgeous waterfall and its mysterious history. As the book begins, the string of unsolved disappearances that has haunted the town is once again thrust in the spotlight with journalist Landon West, who was staying at the end of the story after a vanishing trail, then disappears himself. So I gave this a 3.5 so stars. I don't think it was bad. It did kind of drag on a little bit too much. So yeah, it was really slow. It was really dragging. I couldn't really get into it. Um, but it does pick up doing the on the half of the book. There is a twist that I kind of saw it coming but at the same time I didn't really see it happening so I personally like twists when I don't see them coming at all. So this was a 50-50 kind of thing but um yeah. So there was honestly I feel like this book also had too many coincidences 
like, you know, it, like sometimes he'll call one and start, and then she just happened to blah blah blah, just got a keychain, and you know, just immediately find a random key from a storage facility. Like, what are the odds, you know? So, I honestly find that was just too many coincidences in this book. So, that kind of moving the fun flight mystery thriller novel. So, yeah, that was really disappointing. It was also weird for a storage facility. It didn't have a computer, so I don't know why they don't have a computer, I don't know. But honestly, it would have been more engaging if, like, um, kind of had like a dual path where it flashed to the disappearance of the individual. So it could have, like, a fade to block at the end of each section, which eventually come as a big reveal, but that didn't happen. Yeah, and then just honestly average. But um, yeah, so that's all the audiobooks that I have read so far. Let me know what you have read, and please like, comment, subscribe, so you'll be notified every time I post, and I will see you in the next one. Bye! <laughs>